Welcome back to In Pit Lane. Well, as I said at the start of the show, the traditional road to the Albert Park Australian Formula One Grand Prix has become the Phillip Island Historic Classic, and it's become a major international event in its own right. 540 cars, an equal record entry list, will be down at Phillip Island this weekend. Get cars going back to the 1920s, the 30s, 40s, all the way through to the 1980s with the Group C and uh, Group A touring cars and a lot more. Great field of open wheels, including a number of Formula One, cl one cars, including Alan Jones Williams FW06, a car that I don't think we've actually seen here in... Uh, in Australia before, that, but also coming up for lovers of the Big Banger Formula 5000s, 30. Yes, count them, 30 Formula 5000s unleashed at Phillip Island. If you've never seen a big field of Formula 5000s before, you are in for a treat. When you talk Formula 5000s, one of the names synonymous with the golden days of Formula 5000 in Australia and also the early days of Formula Pacific is our guest tonight. He won four CAMS Gold Star Championships, only the second driver to do that apart from the great Bib Stillwell. And I'm very pleased to say that joining us in pit lane tonight is Alfredo Costanzo. Alfie, welcome to in pit lane. Thank you. Let's go uh, go back. I mean, uh, before we get into the uh, before we get back into the the racing. I mean, you're born in Calabria. When did you first come out to Australia? 1957, at the age of 14 years old. Boom. So that was just obviously just after the Olympics, and uh, it must have been a culture shock at fourteen to come out from uh, come out from Italy and suddenly come into uh, come into a place like Melbourne back in the fifties. Well, my father uh, emigrated from uh, Italy, uh, south of Italy, in uh, nineteen fifty two, and uh, we followed uh, five years later with uh, my two older brothers and my mother. It was a pretty normal thing in those days. So what were your initial impressions? Do you remember what you thought of the place when you got here? Everything was big. <laughs> I come from a little village in Calabria and uh, even big cities, it uh, makes no difference. But uh, seeing the long streets here in Melbourne, uh, we arrived uh, very late in the night and I remember this uh, huge long street uh, of uh, illumination, <clears throat> something that I haven't ever seen in my life before or even imagined that anything like that uh, uh, existed. So when you came out, at what point in your childhood did you start taking an interest in cars? When did when was your first memory of sort of cars becoming an important part of your life? My passion and love for motor cars uh, was uh, already uh, in me, uh, even uh, in, in Italy when I was young. Uh, I believe, uh, and that uh, has been said uh, many times, that uh, uh, my parents uh, uh, said that. Uh, the first noise that came out of my mouth was uh, the sound of a, of a car rather than, uh, than uh, you know, anything else. But uh, no, uh, there was a, a car race in Calabria uh, once a year, which used to be known as the Tour of Calabria. Uh, that ran that, uh, I think, the second week, uh, the second Sunday of August. And uh, as far as I remember, I used to wait uh, very anxiously for this race to, uh, to uh, uh, be. And then uh, after the race, uh, I will leave the next few months uh, with, uh, with the dreams in my mind about this uh, beautiful rising cars and noise and everything else. So when you came to, to Melbourne here in Australia, what's your earliest recollection of motorsport here in Australia? Well, uh, I came here, obviously, because the family came here, but... Um, my father uh, wanted me to go to school, uh, but uh, I didn't want to go to school. I wanted to go to find myself a job, and start earn, earning money, because uh, in my mind, uh, as soon as I turned 18, uh, what I wanted to do, I wanted to buy myself a car and, uh, and obviously start racing the, the machine, which, in fact, that's what I did. So what was, your, what was your first race car? I bought myself a little Fiat 1100 that became a road car and my racing car as well. Uh, I used to sort of race the car in the streets of an office, rowing Carlton and so on. But, uh, yes, and of course we don't encourage that nowadays. <laughs> I mean, yes. So, you, so you, were a, you, you were a hoon, basically. I was, yes. <laughs> uh, but there were a few, uh, and as, as, as you know, the, the road rules weren't uh, as uh, they are now. Uh, the traffic it did not exist. Uh, if it was to die, I would have been arrested. Uh, I was the next day, put it on. So you started off with the with the Fiat. When did you you made your name in sort of open wheelers? When was what was your first open wheeler? Well, uh, uh, I bought myself open wheeler at the age of twenty. It was a lot of twenty uh, Formula Junior car. Uh, I didn't have much luck uh, with a little car. Uh, 
Mainly, I can't blame really uh, anybody but myself. Uh, uh, not enough knowledge uh, of uh, repairing the car, and you need to have a little bit of that. Uh, and uh, too anxious, uh, and, uh, I didn't have any control for this wise. So, and uh, and apart from that, I didn't have a lot of money. So every every dollar that uh, went to the car was never enough. Uh, I always found myself fixing one thing, but not another. So I might have a good engine, but I haven't got a good gearbox, or haven't got brakes, or haven't got uh, tires. Unfortunately, I, I didn't do much good at all. Uh, however, uh, I got married if you're younger, and uh, uh, I got a bit of encouragement for, from my, my wife when she told me if, uh, because she got sick of following me, uh, here and there and breaking down every time and eventually said look if uh, motor racing is your, is, is, your, is your life you better buy yourself a, a, a new car and that's when I purchased myself a, a better formula uh, for a better for a racing car. Well, my, I suppose my earliest memories of you was in the much later on in the Formula 2 days with the Barana and that's where you sort of really started to come into sort of the national prominence. Uh, you did very well in the Formula What are your memories of Formula 2? Because there was a while there when Formula 2 was, was really a pretty big deal with things like the Van Houston series and that Correct. sort of thing. yeah. <coughs> well, open wheel arise in, in those days, it was a big, big deal. Uh, if, you, if you really had uh, any dreams to do a career out of motor racing, you had to come from a, an open wheeler uh, class. Uh, and that's where I wanted to be in. So obviously Formula 1 or Formula 5000 was uh, out of the questions. Uh, Formula Junior uh, wasn't much. It was a good beginner or, good, or a good class to start. But Formula 2 was already a, a, a really good class. And uh, uh, with the Birana and prior to that, I had a, an Elfini monocoque, which uh, I won a few races. I won a couple of championships as well of a minor scale. But the Birana did very well, yeah. Uh, uh, but but then I was uh, older, I, I started to have a little bit of sense. <laughs> and from there, that was your sort of entry into uh, into Formula Five Thousand, and that's when you sort of really uh, came into into prominence. And uh, we're going to take a break now, and when we come back, we'll talk about those days with the with the Formula Five Thousands, and of course, of course, what's happening this weekend at Phillip Island. You're watching in pit lane. Our special guest is Alfredo Costanzo. We will be right back after this. Welcome back to In Pit Lane. Well, our guest is four times Cairns Gold Star winner Alfredo Costanza. And we got to the point where we are just about to enter the world of Formula 5000. And for people who don't know, Formula 5000, I mean, it was, you know, sort of, I suppose, Formula 1 for the rest of us. It was, uh, you know, similar similar power to weight ratio, big, thumping great V8 in the back of a, a lightweight open wheeler. What do you remember of your first experience in Formula 5000? Right then. But in it. incredible whole Spain, incredible talk. Uh, it's okay because any racing car driver really all you want is a horse pair, but um, uh, you can't have too much. And when you have too much, uh, needs uh, needs to deal with. Uh, no good having a lot of horse pair and not being able to transfer to the road. So it becomes uh, becomes uh, uh, how can I say a little bit of a handful. This 5,000, just to give you an idea, if you accelerate uh, flat uh, in second gear and you try and turn that one turn, that push the front wheel straight, or either if that turn, then that generate wheel spin and you finish on a 360. So you got to, you, you, you use more the feeling uh, of the pay application. That's probably the, the, the main thing. Anybody can drive, but uh, to get the best out of the car, the, uh, there's a lot of energy there and uh, to get the best, it really needs a, sp a specific specific way to, to drive. I don't say that I have. <laughs> Maybe we need a Daniel Richard, Richard to, to drive one of those. Well, I mean, you must have done have done fairly well because you won two of your Cairns Gold Star in you know, Formula Five Thousand. Your first car was the was the Lola T three thirty two. Yes. Um, and then the, the car that you won the won your first Cairns Gold Star in was the Lola T four thirty, and that was a a very unique car. What are your memories of that? Well, I had uh, my own car, which was a, a lot of T332, and, uh, and then obviously running down in budget uh, eventually. I, I was in partnership with my own brother-in-law, Marino, 
we got out the business and uh, luckily for me that Hamilton needed a driver and he offered me his car to drive, which was the 430. Now the 430, a uh, couple of previous drivers of the car, they weren't happy with that. Uh, for me, it was a, a better car. I felt the car uh, was a bit more nervous, but was easier to turn. And maybe my, my driving style uh, uh, prefers a, a more nervous car. Uh, I'm more sort of, uh, uh, like a car that uh, as soon you, you you tell it what to do, respond to you. It can be a little bit uh, savage that uh, and, and, and over respond, but I, I was able to, to deal with that. Uh, and consequently, I, I used to perform very well. Uh, and the other thing that uh, uh, was really a, a big change uh, that uh, from that point onwards, I didn't have to worry about uh, maintenance. Uh, uh, obviously, Alan had the, the mechanics, the, the resource uh, and, and the spares so that uh, it was a, a very a very luxury to have. So who were your main competitors back in those days? Oh, well, there were quite a few of them. Uh, John Bell, obviously, was the main competitor to, to me, and then uh, John McCormick, uh, 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 most of it, John, uh, uh, John Leffler. Uh, who, let me think about uh, uh, John Leffler, uh, Kevin Bartlett, and Max Stewart. Uh, you, you mentioned them. Uh, Max was another uh, Max, and and uh, and. Uh, uh, well, I just said his name uh, before. Uh, Kevin. Uh, Kevin. Uh, Kevin Bartley. Both, both of them uh, very good drivers. Uh, and uh, some international drivers that uh, on special events, uh, we had to deal with them as well. It was sort of, as I said, you were at the transition point between the, the golden days of Formula 5000 and uh, Formula Formula Pacific, as it, uh, as it was known, in, uh, as became known in Australia. Um, what was the difference like going from the from the, the raw power of Formula Five Thousand to something like the the Tiger that you drove in to win your your third championship in Formula Formula Pacific? You know, uh, going from the Formula Two to Five Thousand, uh, uh, it was scary in the beginning, but after a little while, uh, you get used to the pair, and uh, it was really enjoyable. Going back and then to the little pair to the Pacific, uh, uh, to be honest, I didn't particularly like it. Uh, especially on a long track. Uh, I remember in Adelaide, they were sitting down park two long straights. Uh, uh, it felt like you spent so much time going from one end of the straight to the other end, uh, changing gear, ev eventually getting into, into top gear, looking at the rev account, and it's not, it's not building up any revs. So where the 5,000 keeps building up more and more speed as you go. Uh, and you really had to push it as a little cast. Uh, uh, over the limit, you, uh, constantly you had to look for another limit because you, you couldn't really, uh, uh, the application of the pair, uh, there was no, no, no difficulties about that. Uh, all the time that we could make by pushing the car, throw the car into the corners and, and, and try and uh, find a bit of time here and there anyway. Well, this weekend down at Phillip Island, of course, you will be back behind the wheel of a Formula 5000, the McLaren M10B. Um, a car with a fascinating history, which we don't even, unfortunately, don't have time to go into the, that particular car. But uh, another Formula 5000, 30 cars out there. What? How do you go into a weekend like this? I mean, you're not racing for sheep stations, but some of these guys are still taking it very seriously, aren't they? Yeah, we do. Uh, we shouldn't, but uh, we do. Uh, you ask Ken Smith, he'll be there. I'm sure he'll be, he doesn't like to to finish it behind me, and uh, so that's what happens. As uh, soon as the flag drops, uh, you don't want anyone in front of you, and that uh, becomes a race. Well, it's going to be an incredible spectacle down there. As I said, 30 Formula 5000s, and head down to Phillip Island and see this man in action. He is one of the, the greats of Australian motorsport. Wish we, it's nights nice like this that you wish you had two or three hours of television time, because I'm sure we could just stay here and talk forever. Perhaps we might be able to catch up in future and uh, do this for a little bit longer. But for now, Alfredo Costanzo, we'll see you down at Phillip Island on the weekend, and thanks for joining us in Pit Lane.